So today we're going to talk about applied volume spread analysis in short-term trading. Um, many of you may not know uh, exactly what volume spread analysis is. It's actually a very fascinating study that has to do with, uh, with reading the, uh, the current volume uh, of the market, uh, the spread of a particular candlestick or, or bar, and reading what's going on inside that bar, which gives us a head up, heads up of what is likely to happen next, which is always what we're looking for. We're looking for um, uh, an edge, right? We're all looking for an edge. So this gives us that opportunity to find that edge, and then I'll show you how to build on that edge uh, as we move forward through this today. Um, first of all, a little bit about me. Um, I started uh, out my professional career as a uh, contractor. I was a uh, remodeling contractor for uh, over 20 years. Um, I got bitten by the trading bug. It was uh, introduced to me by one of my customers, and um, it sure looked a heck of a lot easier than what I was doing as a uh, as a broker, I mean, as a uh, contractor, I I just decided, you know, I got to get out of this somehow. I think I'm going to learn to trade, and in about six months, I should be able to replace my income with uh, with trading income because you know it looks pretty easy. You know, you just need somebody to tell you when to push the button, and and uh, you know, it's usually pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Well. I struggled for seven years, and uh, and then something big happened, and uh, I'm going to talk about that more this Saturday, and we've got a uh, a link for a uh, a little thing we've got going on this Saturday that we want to invite you to, and we'll bring that up in just a minute. I've uh, I've since turned it around. I managed to come out the other side, and I've been a professional full-time trader for uh, a little over seven years now. I, I subsequently kind of became a reluctant um, uh, trading educator. It wasn't my intention, but uh, I had done something that many people were very interested to learn how I did it. And uh, and so I started teaching a small group of people, and the word got out, and the next thing you know, I'm teaching more people. And, and, uh, and suddenly I thought, you know, I, I need to formalize this and create a training program, which we did. And, um, and and also, in the meantime, developed a trading system and, uh, and indicators for our NinjaTrader platform. So uh, I, I'm very involved in trading. Uh, I've done a lot of it. I've done a lot of everything. And uh, I'm one of the few people that, I, that, that has managed to struggle for many years that um, I've actually been able to turn it around and become a professional trader for, for an income. The, this Saturday, this is what I was uh, uh, talking to you about before we get into the meat of the conversation here. We're going to have a, a small event um, where we invite uh, folks to come to our uh, uh, trading room and hang out with us for a couple hours on Saturday. And we go over kind of a training session. And this, this week we're going to uh, do a session called Small Pullbacks, Big Profits. We're going to show you how uh, we're going to actually expand a bit on what we're going to talk about today, and uh, I will expand on that uh, a bit uh, this weekend. And we we're not going to probably have a lot of time for questions and answers today, but I do allow lots of time on Saturday for question and answers. So if we get to a point at the end here where um, you want to ask some questions and we have some time, I'll take a few questions, but by and large, I, I can really expand on and go into much more detail um, in this event that we'll have this Saturday. So if we don't have a link up there, you may want to copy this link and, um, and remember, now, if you do not have this link and uh, you don't have it copied, you can also email lisa at theintentionaltrader.com and she will get you that link. Okay? Lisa at theintentionaltrader.com. Okay? Or you can just write down this link here. So please register for that. It's usually a sold out event on our Saturday uh, events. We have a, uh, a room uh, 
uh, and we we purchase the largest trading room that we can, and we fill it uh, whenever we do one of these Saturday events. So the people that come late typically get locked out. So uh, try to get there on time if you can. All right. So let's move on. Let's let's talk about smart money. First of all, it's very important for us to discuss smart money because smart money are the ones that are moving the markets. They are the market manipulators. The study of volume spread analysis is essentially the study of what the smart money is doing and how they do it and how we can profit on what they're doing. Okay. Now, the smart money has very specific ways they go about doing things. But let's talk about first, what is smart money? Who are these smart money people that I'm talking about? These are um, the, 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 the Investopedia um, um, explanation is uh, insiders and better informed speculators typically invest more. Smart money can sometimes be spotted by greater than usual volume, especially when little or no public data exists to justify this special volume, okay, or this, this uh, exceptional volume, okay. So knowing who these people are and when and, and where they're investing can be a great benefit to us if we know where to look, okay. If we want to ride their coattails, we need to know where to look and how to anticipate what they're going to do next, okay? If you look over in the webinar links on the left, I think we just put in a, a link that you can click on for the Saturday webinar, okay? So make sure you click on that. If you didn't get the link, make sure you click on that and register for our webinar this Saturday where we'll be expanding a lot on what I'll be talking about today. So who's the, the smart money for another term? You might think of the high-frequency traders. You hear of these high-frequency trading robots or these algorithms that trade in, in milliseconds sometimes. They're in and out of the markets very quickly, so they, they, they are manipulating it very, very quickly. Um, you might hear them called market makers or institutional funds. These are all the, the smart monies, the people that can move the market with large volume, okay? And the, and the rest of us are just retail traders. Now, if we go in and we decide that we want to try to trade with smart money or try to trade against smart money, you know, that's trying to, uh, like, stop a freight train and jump in front of a tra freight train. Most of us retail traders don't have a chance uh, to trade against smart money. Um, if you want to try to trade with them, you know, you're not going to be able to move as fast as the smart money moves. They have very specific things that they do and the way they do it, and they get better at doing it every day. They apply these very, um, um, very uh, sophisticated uh, computerized algorithms, and they are, they are much faster than, than most of us can react. And if we try to go with them, they anticipate that that's going to happen. So they'll also take your money. So it's like trying to catch a falling knife to trading with smart money. What we're looking for is to do some, as, the, as they go through their phases of, of manipulating the market, I'm going to show you these phases. We want to come in right after they have done one of, they've gone through one of their phases and, and react to the way other the way the other people that are in the market are reacting. So we want to uh, um, anticipate what the smart money is doing, and then know what the common reaction to that is going to be. All right, and this is what we use volume spread analysis to help us determine. This is one of the tools that we use at the Intentional Trader. All right. So what happens typically? is these, these uh, market manipulations that I'm talking about that are, you know, a lot of them are done by HFTs. You've probably heard about HFTs a lot and how uh, 70 to 80 percent of the liquidity in the markets today is generated by these HFTs that are uh, mechanically um, uh, manipulating the markets, okay, where everybody's complaining about how unfair it is to us little retail guys, but personally I love it because the, the, they always leave 
telltale signs of what they're doing. Okay? They're able to do it today in milliseconds. What they were doing just 10, 15 years ago, it would take them you know, minutes to hours to pull this off. And now they can do the same thing in milliseconds. So the opportunities are available to us in a much, much tighter and faster time scale than they ever have been. Okay, so there's really good opportunities on a small time scale to get in and out of some of these uh, uh, manipulating uh, manipulations that these guys make to get in and out of some really good trades. Okay, and I'm going to show you some of those. So typically what's going to happen during these market manipulations, these guys that do it, these, uh, these, uh, uh, the smart money, they know they're going to generate some panic. They know when people panic what they're going to do, what they're likely to do next, and they create a panic situation. So they're, they're not just manipulating the market, but they're manipulating all of us. They know that certain traders are going to uh, suddenly jump in, and certain traders are going to bail out with a loss. Okay? So they know that there's going to be panic when they manipulate the markets. So they take advantage of of those traders but going both ways. All right. So let's take a look at this. The phases that the smart money uses to manipulate the markets. They're going to do this in in four phases. First phase of a market manipulation is called accumulation. I'm going to go through each one of these things individually. All right. Markup, second phase of, a, of the smart money manipulations. Now, I want you all to make sure you understand, I am taking some dramatic shortcuts in explaining some of the, um, the, uh, the, the, the general uh, information about volume spread analysis and market manipulations. There is no way, there are books and books and books written on this. And there's no way for me to cover this completely in just a very quick session like this. We're just going to hit the high point so that you can see how we can use these manipulations and use volume spread analysis to our advantage. Okay, That's the point of all this. I'm not here to teach you how the HFTs do what they do or who does it. But they, I'm going to show you using volume spread analysis how we can take advantage of it. Okay. Phase three is distribution. Phase four is the markdown phase. All right, and we're going to talk about each of these for just a little bit. All right, so what are the characteristics of an accumulation phase of manipulating the market? This is typically going to be the very beginning of a uh, of a of the uh, the smart money cornering the market on a particular stock or commodity or you know or or futures uh, contracts or whatever typically this is going to be very slow very low volume they're going to do it kind of undercover they don't want to tip their hand and they don't want to know, people to know that they're looking to corner the market on the available uh, shares that are out there okay so they just want to pick up a majority of that, uh, of what's available out there and kind of corner the market. You're generally going to see this taking place in what you and I would call congestion or sideways uh, activity. It's very easy to look at these areas and think that, you know, everybody has just gone to sleep or nobody's trading or there's just nothing going on, when in fact, the big money is very busy, making it look like they're very not busy. All right? they're, they're trying to hide what they're doing. So you're going to see a lot of congestion. You're going to see a particularly, particularly low volume uh, during this period of time. And, and, and trading is going to generally take place in a pretty tight range. 
For example, this will, this I'm going to go over this this chart with you here. Um, but let's look at the accumulation phase. Okay, this is something that we see every day, right? If you look at charts, you see this every day. We trade on a very on a particularly fast chart and at the intentional trader, we use a one minute chart. People can use uh, you know just about any type of chart that you want, any type any time frame. These uh, uh, using volume spread analysis is much easier and much more accurate um, using a, uh, a time-based chart, but it works very well on other types of charts also. So you notice that we're in a very tight range. You see that the bodies of the bars are generally going to be a very small range and on the body. The spread from the high, low, and close is going to be very tight. And uh, uh, this is going to be a, a, a period of time when there's accumulation going on. Now, is it easy to tell if this is a period of accumulation versus a, a, a period of generally no interest? And to those of us without having studied and, and watched uh, uh, the volume uh, on uh, on uh, during a periods like this where prices basically just bounce around sideways it's going to be nearly impossible for those of us that don't make a study out of it you can't just sit there and look at it and know whether there's just no interest in this uh, uh, instrument or whether there's a lot of interest they're just picking it up very slowly there's no way for us to know so we go on to the next phase the markup phase okay so here's what they want to do is they want to pick up as much of an available commodity or stock or whatever I'm just speaking about you know instruments uh, in general here so they're going to pick up as much as they can and then they're going to start to mark it up now it the markup phase is going to be relatively quick okay they want to get it up there and then test it and see if price can hold at these higher points or do they need to back it off and consolidate uh, for a longer period of time before they try it again. So they're going to push it up and when you see a series of, of higher lows and higher highs over a short period of time, this is going to be characteristic of a markup and it's going to happen as soon as it as you see it break out of the range that it's been trading in okay now the next the next thing you'll notice if you happen to be looking at it is suddenly price will jump out of this range but volume is still very low okay so it doesn't take high volume to push price to make price move You'll, you'll still see a pretty low volume, although pricing has increased quite dramatically over the last, I don't know, several, depends on what kind of chart you're using, but over the last several bars, price has broken out of a range. And now a lot of times people that are breakout traders are going to try to jump in this, okay? And so that's going to help to push that price up, all right? Now, these, these markup phases are generally don't happen all at once. They're going to bump it up, and then they're going to allow price to settle, see how it's doing. Maybe it'll start pulling back. Maybe some of us, uh, uh, those of us that like to trade this, will start taking some profits off at this point. So maybe price will drift back and retrace a little bit. Okay, so we'll get, we'll get a pullback here. And then they'll push it up again, and they'll mark it up yet again, okay? So you see these, these areas where we have a markup. Can you guys see? You guys can't see my, uh, here's a pointer, okay. So we've got a markup, and a markup, and then they stop, and they let price drift. And they, and they just kind of wait and see what's going to happen. Some profit takers might take some profits here and start pulling, pulling price back. Okay? Then, then they see that price is holding, and, and maybe it's ready for another markup. So they'll push it again. 
All right, and then again, profit takers start allowing price to pull back. So here's a pullback here after this markup period, okay? This, is, this can be a one-minute chart. This could be a five-minute chart. This could be a one-hour chart. This can be a one-day chart. This, the, the type of chart that we're looking at here makes no difference as far as uh, volume spread analysis goes, okay? It's going to look the same way. The opportunities that are available to us today that were not available just a few years ago are on the very fast time frames because this has been being done for many years, many years, and it was done manually. Now it's done, by, done on computers and it can be done very quickly, therefore we can take advantage of it very quickly. All right? So now let's talk about the characteristics of distribution. Okay? So first we have accumulation, then we have the markup phase, and now we want to see the distribution phase. What are some of the characteristics of the distribution phase? Okay? So they're going to be start offloading some of this, what they've been acquiring now, they're going to start offloading it for a profit, right? Very difficult to, to know when this is happening, unless you happen to know when to look and where. Again, it's going to be done very slowly. It's going to be done... Um, uh, to try to keep people from noticing. They're going to try very hard to keep uh, the volume from peaking to the point where people suddenly have uh, an interest in what's going on. But then it peaks at the end of the distribution with some major upthrust bars. Okay? So they're going to go through the distribution, and it'll look very much like accumulation. They're, they will be picking up their profits during distribution, and then at the very end, when right after, again, same thing, it looks just like accumulation. Suddenly you'll get some, uh, a few very hard upthrust bars that, again, happen on relatively low volume. Okay, and then the final phase. Final phase is the markdown. All right, so they've made their profits on a large portion of the uh, instruments that they hold, or the contracts that they hold, or whatever it is. Now what they're going to do is they're going to dump the balance of their holdings on the market. And when they dump it, supply is going to just rush in, okay? Prices are going to just start dropping like crazy. Well, this is that, you know, I, I mentioned before, that panic phase. Many of us are sitting around trying to figure out when and where to take a trade, and suddenly price starts crashing all around us, and we're like, holy cow. And if you, if you just bought in a few minutes ago, you're going to be doubling down, trying to average back up as prices drop it, and you keep throwing more contracts on it, trying to average up, driving the price down even faster. All right? So suddenly there's a, a, a flood of orders coming into the market. Uh, they, they throw them in all at once, and they drive the price back down to start the whole process all over again. Okay, this is a very, back up a little bit, this is a very typical, in fact I was doing, I knew I was doing this, uh, this event today, so I was watching the, the markets today, and if you go back and you look at some one minute charts today, you're going to see this exact setup, almost, looks almost like this chart. That was funny because I was giggling to myself because I had been working on this for a few days. And I looked back at this and I thought, man, it looks just like the chart I just drew. It's exactly what happens every day. Go back and look at uh, and, and use different time frames. You'll see the same thing. 
one minute, five minute, 15 minute, one hour, one day, you'll see the same thing, okay? All right, so this is kind of a background on how the smart money is moving the markets, okay? So now, how do we use volume spread analysis to help us to determine when these phases or when we can take advantage of these phases of manipulation. How do we use volume spread analysis for that? Well, there's, there's three components to volume spread analysis to determine supply and demand. So first we're going to look at volume. We want to look at the price spread of the current bar or candlestick. And we want to look at the close of price of that bar or candlestick. Okay? Those are the three components to help us determine what's going on with supply and demand. Whether it's on a one minute or one day time frame or anything in between. Okay? So something that, be, uh, that we need to be looking for while we're trading this. We need to know the difference between an up bar where price continues to close up, a down bar where price is continuing to close down, and the spread of a bar, which means the high and low of the bar, not just the, the, uh, the open and close of the bar, but the high and low of the bar, and the close of the bar. Okay, So those are the uh, very important to us, also very important things to look for. Up thrust bars. Okay, I, I mentioned when these up thrust bars happen. Remember, after accumulation, we'll be breaking out of the range that we've been trading in with an up thrust bar. Now, an up thrust bar can close up or down, but the high of the bar is going to thrust higher than the high of the previous bar. Okay. So this will be an up thrust bar after accumulation. Okay, these are our up thrust bars. Oops, let me grab my. These are our up thrust bars. Okay. Now what we're looking for after an up thrust, remember, price is going to push hard and fast, and then and then what we're looking for is low volume, but a hard push in price. Okay, we want to see price moving with low volume and large spreads on these bars. Okay, we want to see a very hot, and this is relative to the previous bars. Right, it's very important relative to the previous bars because what's a large spread? That's you don't know unless you've got some history uh, to look back at over the last several minutes or hours or whatever time frame you're looking at. So they're going to have a, a wide spread. They're going to push, price is going to push higher with low volume. Okay, very important. So these are the up thrust bars, and then they're followed by, invariably they're followed by price either flattening or retracing, pulling back, pulling back. We also see that happen at just before the markdown phase. Remember, we're coming through the distribution. You know, we can do the after the markup, and then we'll mark up again. Then maybe we go into distribution. We'll have these up thrust climax bars, and then price plummets during the markdown phase. Okay? They do this to us all day long, every day. Go back and look at a chart and see if you can pick up some of these uh, these patterns. All right, so how do we use volume spread analysis to determine when this is going to happen? All right, so first thing we got to do is determine when we see bars that have a wide spread of relative to the previous bar activity. Okay, so we're looking for uh, whether the volume in that bar has been buying or selling volume and we want to see a very wide spread on the bar from the high to low of the bar and relative 
to previous bars and the close of that bar and previous bars. Okay? All of this very important. Now, each bar that we look at, let's use these candles. These are big fat candlesticks to, that, I, that I drew to help you to uh, visualize what's going on inside of a candlestick. Okay? So we know during the course of the life of a candlestick, one minute, five minute, whatever, that price can do many things. So the candlestick itself is only at a glance going to tell you if price is here or somewhere in here. Um, and if it's a closed candlestick, you'll know that price opened here and closed here. Does not tell you what happened with price inside this candlestick. All right? So price can bounce around, bounce around, bounce around, bounce around, or it could steadily climb. You don't know, but there is a difference. And, and if you know the difference, you'll know what's likely to happen next. Okay? So this can be a no-churn bar, meaning price just marches from open to close in the up direction, no churn. All the volume coming in was buying volume, relatively no uh, selling volume at all, all buying volume. And it could be a high volume, a lot of buying volume coming in, okay? Versus same bar, but the volume could actually be driven by buyers and then sellers, and buyers and then sellers, and buyers and then sellers. And so we get a churning action inside of the bar. Okay, so the story of the bar opening here and closing here is not the whole story. It's how far did that bar travel and what type of volume was going on inside that bar. If we know that there's a churning going on inside the bar, we know there's a very good chance that there's some indecision going on here. There's, there's something that's likely to happen, and that indecision is likely the uh, the, going to precipitate that price is going to turn around and go the other way. All right, that's a good source to tell us that 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 we could anticipate a pullback at this at this point. Okay, we have an indicator that we use to make all of this much easier to learn and understand. If you if you want to watch it on a chart and try to pick up all of these subtle nuances. Now remember, these guys are, are pros at trying to hide this. And they spend a lot of money to hide their activity from us so that we cannot pick up what they're doing. But we've applied um, the uh, price and volume and we read that, the indicator that we, we've got here is called the pullback alert. This is the indicator that we use in the trade room. And I'm going to go over this, how we use it here in just a minute. We've got several different levels of price and volume that we can read with this indicator. So we can pick up when a bar is a churn bar or when a bar is a climax bar. Okay? Or we can pick up when a bar is both. And we can indicate with what we use in the room is this particular symbol right here. You can use anything you want um, on the indicator. You can pick a symbol, use whatever you want. We just use a little dot with a three in it to indicate that it's a one and a two together. That makes it a three. Okay, But like I say, you could use a Batman symbol or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just as long as you know what it is. So it tells us that this bar has a particular type of activity going on inside this bar, that there may be a, a lot of volume and it's a high churn, high climax bar, and that we may be anticipating a pullback here. We may also we also have a couple of indicators to inside this pullback alert. All of this is inside the pullback alert um, to let us know when the particularly low volume and low churn bars are. All right. This is how we pick up where the market manipulators are likely 
moving the markets and when and how to take advantage of them. So if we're looking at a chart and we want an idea on when they might be pulling, it, pulling price back, we simply have these little dots that tell us right here, this bar was precipitated. See how long this bar is? This bar was precipitated by it being a, uh, a high a climax bar with high churn activity. All right, so it was a down bar with a, with a very wide spread and we would anticipate some degree of pullback here. Same thing with this. This was a um, this was a uh, a churn bar. This bar here, remember, got a wide spread relative to the prior bars, and the volume was such that coming in, that it was churning to the point where that we would anticipate a pullback and price to turn around. All right, same thing here. This is how we use volume spread analysis to analyze what is what the uh, what type of activity the market makers, the smart money, are putting in at that point in time. Okay, so this is this is our volume spread analysis. Now, how did I how did I decide to use this? I started out when I was struggling, and I was trying to figure out a better way to learn how to trade. I just couldn't I couldn't get it. You know, I I was trying to listen to everything that I heard. I was trying to copy people. I was trying to I was reading everything. I was spending countless hours reading forums because I thought everybody on forums was so much smarter than me. And so I was trying everything. I was trying to, anyway, I did this for 7 years. None of it ever worked. I finally decided one day that I was going to quit doing everything I was doing and I was going to approach trading the same way I approached my business which as a contractor my job was solving problems that's what contractors do your problem solver from the time you get started all day long that's your job so I decided you know what I'm gonna look at this and I'm gonna solve this problem I'm gonna look at a chart and I'm gonna go okay what do I want to know about this chart and what is what seems very apparent to me looking at just a chart and so here's a typical chart I might have looked at well, I'm going to see on this chart areas where it's very likely that something happened that caused price to turn around or to at least do something predictable. You know, why all of a sudden price is moving up, everything's fine. Why all of a sudden did it stop here and pull back? Why all of a sudden did it stop here and pull back? What is causing this? Okay. So that was my mission. Rather than thinking when to, uh, looking for a place to trade, I wanted to get a better understanding of what the market is doing. And I wanted to approach it like a layman, like somebody who doesn't have all of this information that I had, that I had acquired, not knowledge, just a lot of information that I was trying to use to learn to trade with. So what I did ultimately was create a series of indicators, one of which was, is the volume spread analysis indicator called the pullback alert, that does exactly what I was looking for. I decided if I could figure out a way to see that something happened right here that caused price to do this, what would those things be? So I started looking. I started looking at um, order flow analysis. I started looking at divergence. I started looking at support and resistance. I started looking at everything. Right at this particular point, I say, okay, what else might have happened here that could tell me when price was going to do that? So I started adding these things together and building levels of confluence and reading and using volume spread analysis to help add to that level of confluence okay so not this isn't the only thing that I use to determine when price is going to turn and I might have a trading opportunity I use that as confluence with other indicators that suggest the same thing all right one of which is when I said I told you so uh, order flow analysis 
this is what I want to do when I'm, when I'm looking at orders coming through and suddenly something changes in the, in the flow of orders coming in. Something changes and it changes radically and dramatically. And, and volume wasn't necessarily affected. But the speed and size of the orders going through um, was absolutely affected. Now how can I pick that up? and put it on a chart and see if that's where the pullback started happening. So that's exactly what I did. I used the time and sales. I started analyzing time and sales. I created a, a histogram to help me determine where these points might be and, uh, and generated a threshold level where more than likely there's a manipulation going on that's causing this little pullback here. That's all I wanted to know. You know, if, if you want to get, if you want to pick this up and go from here to up here, and that's how you're trying to learn how to trade, um, or that's what you're more comfortable with, fine. But for me, I was a small contract trader, and I, I never could get beyond trading a single contract or at the very most three, which I shouldn't have been because I never got good at one, so I shouldn't have been trading three. So I decided, and I kept trying to do this, but I figured out that my mentality was such that I was not emotionally able to ride, uh, you know, these trends uh, that go on forever, and, and you're supposed to ride them up and down, up and down, and, and have these huge stops, and, you know, I just couldn't do it. So I decided, you know what, I just want to know when something little is going to happen, and how do I take advantage of that? I want to get in and out of the market as quickly as I can, put a little money in the bank and let's see how often I can do that. So I started looking for my little piece. That's what I kept telling myself. Quit quit looking for the big enchilada. I want my little piece. And so I wanted to see how many different ways I could pick up my little piece. So I used volume spread analysis to determine when the uh, when the big money is manipulating the market. I used order flow analysis to also determine when the big money is moving the market. So now I've got two different types of analysis, two different sources of data, both suggesting the exact same thing. Relative order flow, okay? Remember I told you we could go from a high volume uh, order flow to no volume order uh, or, or low volume, yet with low volume prices still moving dramatically. So I want to pick up where these dramatic moves are happening. So we've got another indicator using the same histogram, uh, another indicator called a ricochet. So when we have relative number of orders going through relative to the prior orders going through, suddenly the orders go through uh, a lot faster than they were coming through before in these particular chunk sizes that I'm looking for, hitting this threshold we get this indicator suggesting that during the course of this bar we've got suddenly a burst of activity and very typically after that we get that pullback. Okay? Divergence is another thing that we use to help us uh, on this volume spread analysis uh, determining where the pullback is going to be. Um, if you haven't used divergence in your trading uh, you really should. The problem with divergence is that the uh, it's very hard to read. It's very hard to read. So a lot of people can't do it or won't do it or miss it. So what we've done is we've actually uh, uh, combined it with our volume spread analysis and now we can pick up a pullback that's likely to happen using divergence. All right, and we just put it right on the chart. Uh, somebody put in that we haven't seen volume on our charts. Exactly right. You will not see volume on our charts. We don't need it because we have the indicators on the charts suggesting to us the information that we need to make decisions. We put it on in our indicator. And, and those include volume. We do not need a histogram to read volume. We only want to know when certain types of volume are coming in. And when that important type of volume is coming in, 
it'll generate a signal from our indicator. So we don't want to see volume when it's not important to us to make a trade decision. Okay? So you won't see it on our charts, but it's in our indicators. All right? Support and resistance, something very important that we use. Um, when I told you I was looking for ways to determine where price is likely to turn, along with the volume spread analysis indicator, the pullback alert, and seeing where the markets are being manipulated and when they will uh, use one of these climax bars or up thrust bars, when those bars are very low volume bars, they're actually very weak in nature. What happens is they slam into a very strong line of resistance. And since they're very weak in nature to begin with, they hit this line of resistance and pull straight back. Well, we're also likely to get our indicator, our pullback alert indicator, will also let us know that this is very weak upthrust bar. And it's very likely price cannot push past this level. There's not enough oomph behind it. And it slammed into a brick wall on top of it. So this is a very typical place where we'll see price pull back as, as uh, the profit takers kind of uh, uh, run in and start taking their profits after this push up right here. Okay, So very common to use support and resistance with our volume spread analysis indicator. Um, overbought, oversold areas, very typical that uh, if you use an oscillator to determine when price is overbought or oversold. Um, the thing about being overbought or oversold, when, uh, when price exceeds the extremes of a particular oscillator, and this is the RSI oscillator uh, or relative strength index, when we get to a point where the relative strength index suggests, this is a better place, that price is now overbought. What happens is that the, the, uh, the, the traders in the market at the time kind of like to pull it back. Once it hits an extreme, they want to pull it back inside of these lines. Okay? They like with, there's a, a saying that I've heard that traders like to trade between the lines. All right, so we, we see these extremes and, and, and uh, they want to pull it back between the lines. So whenever we see these extremes, what we do, rather than having this oscillator on the screen, we prefer to, um, whoops, we prefer to not have all of this superfluous information on the screen. We get rid of this oscillator and just put it right here where you need the information, right? This is what we call one of our heads up display indicators. It's right on the screen, right where you need it, and uh, we just get rid of the oscillator, okay? This also helps us determine yet another way to anticipate a pullback after the big money's manipulating the market. And the market's getting tired anyway. And we've got low volume pushing price up after um, a, a, a period, a, a series of markups. Then we have a, and it runs into a major line of resistance, then we have a real good idea what's going to happen next. Price cannot just continue to push. It's going to have to stop and rest and pull back. And that's the little piece. That's our little piece that we pick up every day. All right? That's what we're looking for. All right? We also have some uh, minor uh, support and resistance lines that we like to use. So I was this guy, you know, I, would, I was looking at a chart and I would see, I would be watching something like this happen, I'd be, and I'm watching price drop, and I go, oh, you know, my gut says that on a big bar like this after a bunch of small bars, my gut says price is probably going to turn around. But I had nothing to go on. I had nothing to go by. All right? So I prefer to uh, see if I can pick up when that's going to happen. So this is the exact same thing, but we apply now volume spread analysis. We apply order flow analysis. 
we apply divergence. We apply an overbought, oversold. Now that information that we need for determining that price very is likely to pull back here, we have all that information right here, right in front of us. All right, so how do we do that? We do it with confluence. Like I said, confluence is just a combination of pulling all of these things together, these, these different ideas or strategies. We pull them together to determine these different levels, okay? All different sources of information, to pull them together into a single strategy, okay? Now, the best indicators that to use are the ones that are going to get that are going to um, give you the most information with the least amount of effort, right? For example, you know, here's some indicators here that some people will give. You know, and indicators are basically we're going to use them to see what is our competition's intentions, right? Our competition, the big money, or other retail traders. Okay, what are their intentions? So we're looking. This is typically what an indicator is. So Based on the indicators, do each of these things give you a clear picture of what this person's intentions are, right? Maybe a grimace or somebody wearing a mask or somebody uh, with a, uh, a fist or somebody with their, their shoulder up or something. Is this, a, is this a good indicator of what this person's intentions are? Not necessarily, okay? Because you've only got this one thing, so it's really hard to determine what what any one of these people is likely to do next just from this one thing. Now, if we start combining those things and we get a confluence of indicators, the intentions of what's coming next seem much more obvious, right? There's a fist, there's a hunched shoulder, a, a grimace, and a mask. Now we can combine all these things into a single idea. This is the idea of using the, the volume spread analysis for these short-term trades, okay, along with these other technical analysis uh, 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 indicators that we have, whether you use them on a one-minute chart, any type of chart, they they are independent of time frame. All right. So, for example, here's a bunch of uh, of, of charts that may look very similar to you, something that you're used to working with. Maybe you have confluence to try to make a trade decision, but they're not necessarily easy to see and read. So it's very important to get something where maybe you've got a chart that looks like this and turn it into a chart that looks like this. This is the same chart, by the way. All of this information, this chart is the same as this chart. All of this information is right here, okay? including the volume spread analysis indicator, which is right here. All right, so we're just looking at making it easy, adding confluence of the indicators, right? Like I showed you, we've got all these different non-correlated indicators and ways to, when they all come together, they create confluence, and, and then we, can, we see that we have some high probability setups. All right, so again, this is, this is what I started with was just a blank chart and ended up with this very clear picture of when price was likely to turn. And that's all that we're looking for is that little piece, that consistency to know what's likely to happen next. All right. So do we have confluence? Yeah. Is it easy to read? Yeah. Pretty much. All right. So again, we're having our training session. We're going to go over all this and much more. I had to go through it very quickly today. Um, if you look over on the left, you'll see it says a Saturday webinar with Tony. Click on that link. I think it's on your left. Click on that link. And I'm, I won't have time to answer any questions today, but I'll have lots of time on Saturday. So if you'll please save your questions, remember what your questions were, um, and we'll go back to it, and I'll answer all your questions this Saturday. It's at 11 on Saturday. 11 a.m. Eastern Time on this Saturday. So if you go to register, you'll get all that information. Okay? Now, we also want to offer all of you 
a uh, a one week special. We usually charge forty nine dollars for this, but we want to offer you um, one week free to come to our trading room and see the volume spread analysis indicator at work. Um, you can watch us trade our trading system in the trade room. Very common for people to like to use the volume spread analysis indicator to enhance their own trading. Okay, it's something that has been around since the 1920s and then uh, again picked up in the 60s and 70s and computerized and uh, it's just getting better and better but people use it less and less but the um, the big money guys are getting better and better at using it so our uh, our indicator uh, because uh, things move so fast now our indicators can pick it up uh, whereas previously you had to be very adept at seeing it yourself okay so uh, we'll talk about more more of this on uh, Saturday, but come visit us in the trade room for a week. We'll show you how we combine these things to create a trading system that you may want to try or maybe just add to your trading system to augment what you're already doing. All right, and it was a pleasure speaking to all of you today. I want to thank you very much for coming, and uh, hopefully we'll see you all uh, very soon in the trading room.